Are there sharks in Wyoming, or am I crazy? Let's find out. Fossil Hay from CFA. What's up guys? Ash Bigail here, owner of Charleston Fossil Adventures and photographer and co-author of A Beachcomber's Guide to Fossils. I am on the hunt for shark teeth, but I'm not at the beach. I am out here in the middle of Wyoming. We are at Rock of the Glen here in Glen Rock, and we have been told that there are shark teeth hiding up here on this rock outcrop. So let's go find some. Okay, it's been probably about 45 minutes or an hour, and this type of hunting truly does show that you need the search image for what you are looking for out here. We have been scouring all of the gravel washes here, and finally, after an hour, we've located our first tooth. We'll take a look at this thing. It's not very impressive, but it's my first Wyoming shark tooth. Can you spot it? It is right down there. Look at that thing. Yes, sir. This is some type of sand tiger shark that was living here during the Cretaceous 69 to 70 million years ago when Wyoming was underwater. Awesome. Let's go get another. All right, there we go. Tooth number two. It appears we just have the crown. Look at that gorgeous white coloration. We got a real page turner here. Found another massive tooth out here in Wyoming. Right down there, do you see that beast? Look at him. He might not be big, but that is a Wyoming shark tooth. Awesome coloration on these. Ow! Gah! Note to self, don't sit on the cactus. Well, we didn't say they were going to be big. That right there, believe it or not, is a shark tooth. You really have to stop and take in the scenery though. Check out this beautiful landscape to go fossil hunting at. So one thing we've seen out here is there are a number of little small rodent and mammal bones. And of course, they are bleach white, just like the shark teeth. However, there is one creature out here that is not walking around on this cliff. And that would be stingrays. Look at that. It is a bleach white fossilized stingray tooth. Gorgeous roots and all from 70 million years ago when this landscape was underwater. Wow.
Whoa, whoa, don't go anywhere yet. Things are about to really pick up. Ah. Anyway, if you're enjoying the video, I'd appreciate a like and a subscription to the channel. Thanks. We've learned another lesson out here. Very important lesson. Make sure you follow your instructions to get to the site. We were searching in the complete opposite side of the site where all of the teeth were. We found the actual location and right away, here's a perfect tooth sitting right on top of the ground. Check out that perfect tooth right there. Wow, that is what we came out here for. That is a flawless, whoo, sorry. The ants out here are, are quite abundant. That is a flawless little sand tiger from the Cretaceous. And right behind it, we have one right there. All right. We also have in this area a shark vertebra right down here. Look at that. And another one right here. Oh, and another tooth right here. So yes, we are on them now. Oh shoot, and look, there's one coming out of the wall right there. Wow. Yes, sir. Let's go get some more. Take a look at that guy. I'm definitely going to have this one with the close-up camera for a better shot. Wow. This tooth belongs to a member of the sand tiger shark lineage and is only six millimeters long. And we have one with a root sticking out. Ooh, he's curved. Look at that thing. All right. Look at that. We have an Encodus. Oh shoot. All right, so we have one tooth here. Looks like it is, oh, oh, that is an angel shark tooth. That is an angel shark tooth. And then over here, Initially, just sitting there, an Encodus fish tooth sitting right on top of a shark tooth. Wow. Looks like we might have a potential Hamulus shell right here. Something that I am used to finding at some of the other Cretaceous sites I have visited. I may be familiar with them in the field, but I misspoke there. These are actually tube worms that live inside calcium carbonate secretions that they create. Essentially, the worm takes dissolved calcium and packs it down around itself, making this little tunnel or home that it can live in to pull in various prey items. People might be more familiar with these as the giant tube worms, like those red and white cigarette looking worms that live at hydrothermal vents at the very bottoms of our oceans. Really, the stuff of nightmares. It's funny, I say this on my tours all the time. I give my intro and I talk about where the sea level was 18,000 years ago, 30 million years ago. But here I am walking in Wyoming in the middle of a field with a sandstone outcrop there behind me. And all of this used to be an ocean 70 million years ago. It really is easy to think about sea levels fluctuating when you live right by the ocean. But when you are in the middle of the desert, in the middle of our country, 
miles, hundreds of miles from the closest ocean, in fact closer to the Pacific than the Atlantic, it's mind-blowing to think about the elevation you're at being covered by water and sharks swimming overhead, losing these teeth 69 to 70 million years ago. Phenomenal! We found so many cool finds at the end of yesterday's trip we decided we had to come back today to see what other teeth are out here so here's a quick look at some of them I'm also going to be putting up some microscope camera footage of these because it was incredibly hard yesterday to film these in the field because these are super tiny teeth so I hope you enjoy the ones we find today and all of the microscope footage if you like finding shark teeth then you'll love finding them in your mailbox. Help support fossil education and exciting new content by becoming a member of our Patreon page known as Shark Tooth Club Monthly. Members receive boxes each month with fossils I've personally collected. Perks include fossil identification, one-on-one -on -one video sessions with me, and the chance to own a fossil featured in our videos. Learn more by clicking the link below. think about that. It's nothing. If we were in Charleston, I would say this is a ray vertebra or a very small shark vertebra. Spoiler alert, it's not. I don't know. This one is a little odd. We'll have to take this one back for an identification. It's just a plant seed. So here's the teeth that I was calling angel shark teeth while out in the field. Once I got back and did a little more research about these, it appears that they have undergone a lot of taxonomic changes dating as far back as 1846. At their earliest, they were assigned to the Squatina or Squatina genus, which includes the angel sharks, but subsequent publications have also included them within the Credo rectolobus genus and the Cedar stromia genus. So these are potentially extinct Wabagong shark teeth. In today's oceans, these sharks actually will range from the inner tidal zone to depths well over 300 feet, looking for crustacean, small fish, and other invertebrates. We even managed to find this one in situ or still contained within the host rock. And I think I'm going to leave this one that way. This next tooth is absolutely adorable. And quite honestly, I don't know how I saw it. This thing is three millimeters tall and wide, coming from an extinct genus of sharks called Paleogaleus. These are triacid sharks, also known as the hound sharks. This particular genus lived from the Cretaceous all the way up through the Paleocene, so about 50 million years ago. And as you can see, one of its characteristics are those double lateral cusplets flanking the side of the main crown there, so two extra teeth on each side, which is really cool for a tooth this tiny. Next up we have a tooth that many collectors might be familiar with, even if not familiar with this specific genus. This comes from Brachyrhizotus, it is an extinct type of stingray, 
As you can see, this tooth looks a lot like our modern cow nose and rhinopterid ray teeth. I love that little bilobate or two-parted root to the tooth. Once again, this thing is absolutely tiny. You can see that's the tip of a very small paper clip that I'm using to move it about under the microscope. Here we have an absolutely stunning piece of prismatic cartilage. So some of that heavily structured cartilage that can be found in the skull and the gill region of sharks, even ones alive today. Perhaps what surprised me most was the fact that we found not one, but two dermal denticles armoring from the bodies of rays, most likely on these two. Always keep your eye out for these tiny little button-shaped fossils with the big thorns sticking up, as you can see here on the second one. Since these teeth were weathering out of a sandstone bluff, there were some pretty incredible colors on them. Many of them have this surface discoloration that almost looks like snowflake obsidian. And then this lighter colored one actually has discoloration from plant roots and water running past it within the formation. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. It was a blast being out here in Wyoming to collect shark teeth. If you enjoyed it, I really would appreciate a like on this video. And if you haven't already, I would love your subscription to the channel if you feel like I've earned it. That's it for this time, folks. Until the next one, happy hunting, collect responsibly, and we'll see you next time.